on the Jacob Beer Show today. I'm sorry, but I have on Zane Dowdy. Um, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing good. How are you? Pretty good. I appreciate you willing to come on. Um, congratulations on committing to Ball State about a week ago, as well as um, going 33 and 0, if I'm correct. So, yep. congrats. Lots of success and ending like top 10 in the nation as well. So, congrats to all your success so far this year and best of luck in the future. Kind of take us through how did you get involved with basketball? You're a tall guy, but I'm sure, you know, going to Ben Davis, there might have been other sports that coaches might have wanted you for, such as football or things like that. How did you kind of get stuck with basketball? You know, how did that become your passion and your sport? Well, it all started back in uh, middle school, seventh grade, uh, still uh, Ben Davis's middle school, Lynnhurst. Um I never really, I never touched the basketball before. You know, I, I just never really got into it. I was a football, baseball kid. But uh, seventh grade, the coaches, they wanted me to, they wanted me to come. And, I, you know, I was terrible or whatever. And I got on the team, but I only played B team. But uh, Coach uh, Roosevelt uh, Colvin, he, was, he ran an AAU team, uh, the Indy Nets. Uh, he picked me up, and over the summer, I got better, and I got good enough to where I was starting middle school, eighth grade year, and then, you know, freshman year, moved straight up to JV, and, you know, uh, about around then, I, like, knew, like, this is it. Like, I, I love this sport, and, you know, it's going to get me somewhere. So that's that's where, you know, the passion and where I really, you know, kind of fell in love with the sport. Interesting. And then did you quit football in high school, play at all like that, or was it just basketball from freshman year on out? Uh, freshman year, I played football, but after that, I just focused on basketball. Interesting. And of course, for Ben Davis, this past year was an absolutely insane season 33 and 0. Um, where do you begin? You guys beat Penn in the holiday tournament at Newcastle, ended up playing Southport, make it all the way through there. You ended up playing Cathedral High School in the regional. I remember having dinner or having an early dinner after the New Pal game because I go to New Pal in high school and uh, it didn't go as planned, but we were happy that we made it that far. And I remember coming back in absolutely insane, 7,000 people in there. What was the experience like playing in a game like that? Of course, that was a big game on the line. A lot of people said, wonder if that will take it all. And what was that? What was it like? You know, you guys had some early technicals. I remember there was something with the coach. What was it like? on a game where you're playing with a couple of D1 athletes, including yourself on each end of the floor for both teams. What was that experience like? I mean, you know, the experience is just amazing, you know, just the competitiveness and just the electricity of everything. And, you know, you gotta, you gotta stay on, stay on your toes. Cause you know, both high level competitors on both sides, you know, I got my teammates, but we're also playing against good people. So, you know, it's just, the experience is just really like nothing else, you know, just up and down and just really, it's really fun more than anything. Interesting. And then after then, um, you ended up playing Brownsburg, um, well, a team before that, Jennings, if I'm correct. Yeah. Um, yes. Then you make it to state. You got to play Kokomo. Kokomo was pretty hot coming out. They beat Penn, Marcus Burton, lots of talent. Flory they have, uh, who's number three, I believe, in the class next year, number two. What was it like guarding him or being on him at times during the state finals game, which was, you know, you guys maintained a lead, but it wasn't safe the entire time. You definitely had to be on your feet the entire time. It wasn't like Brownsburg in the second half. You know, it was a couple possession game, you know. What was that like being in a state title game playing like that? I mean, as for guarding him and playing against him, you know, I just love, you know, the more the better the competition I'm playing, the better I'm going to play. You know, I just love it really gets something going in me. And I just love going out there, you know, going at the biggest guy or at the uh, most high level guy and just, you know, holding them below their averages or whatever. And then, you know, just playing in the state championship game, you know, sold out crowd at Gainbridge, 15,000 people for a high school game. It's it was like nothing else ever experienced. You know, it feels like a dream. Like it's like we really did it. We did the impossible. We did what everybody dreams of. And it's just it was just amazing. For sure. And, and I had on the anthem singer. She did an incredible job at that game, so quite a sight. What would you say was kind of your favorite moment? Was it winning? Was it the entire experience of getting to be in the locker room on an NBA floor? What would you say was your biggest takeaway from that? Um, the bonds oh. made with teammates? What was it kind of, would you say? 
I mean, definitely just, you know, winning it with the guys that I've been with for some of them four years and, you know, all the work we put in and it all finally paid off. Definitely. That was definitely the best moment with those guys. Interesting. And then, of course, after that, um, you had decommitted from Valpo. You're not going to Ball State. Unfortunately, I'm going to Purdue, but Ball State was the final three options, so I'll say chirp, chirp. Um, <laughs> you ended up getting a lot more offers, of course. Um, what kind of made you then settle with Ball State, you know, as your final destination? Was it because it's close to home? They got a fantastic coach, by the way, who was at UCLA about a year ago. Definitely see him winning a MAC championship in the next couple of years. What made you go with Ball State? You had um, St. Bonavent, I'm sure some other ones. What was that decision process kind of like? I mean, I definitely, I've always wanted to go to a school that wants me and I like, I'm a priority for them. And, you know, they, they, they're focused on me and they got a plan for me and everything. And, you know, they're, they gotta be like, I always want to go to a good program. Like, cause you know, I, I, I'm a competitor, you know, I love winning. And with Ball State, they really just stayed on me. They showed the most interest and like, they made it clear that I was our pri priority to them and you know I just love that and you know I was just excited to be uh there for the next four years interesting and a couple other questions I just want to ask I don't want to hold you for too long it's a Friday night but um yeah. three kind of quick questions what's an interesting fact about you that people might not know besides you're tall and you play basketball oh I mean uh you know uh an interesting fact you know uh actually right next to me uh I, I own sugar gliders. They're a, kind of an exotic animal. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. They're kind of like, but you know, they're, they're pretty awesome. Uh, that is probably the most uh, interesting fact about me. Cause you know, no one really expects it. Uh, and every time uh, I say something about it, you know, it's just like, what, what are those? But yeah, those, that's kind of, that's probably definitely the most interesting fact about me for sure. Interesting. Wow. Well, when I put this out on YouTube, not the Spotify format, that's <laughs> that's pretty funny. Yeah. Interesting. Do you have a name for it? Oh, this one's uh, Lycan, but uh, I got another one in the cage. Uh, it's a uh, his name is like or his name is Rowan. This one's Lycan. Interesting. Wow. Um, and then two other kind of quick interesting questions. Do you have maybe, and it doesn't have to be a current NBA player. Do you have? A basketball star of all time, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, Kevin Durant, any or anybody. I'm just, you know, those are some of the big names. Do you have somebody like that, you know, you kind of look up to, you know? I mean, definitely um, I, right now in the league, I, I love Luca. Like, he's just, you know, he's just awesome. All time right now, uh, that's – it's probably definitely between LeBron and MJ for sure, you know, a classic, those two. But, I mean, as of right now, definitely LeBron. Interesting. I saw him at the Ohio State Notre Dame game. I was in line at the concession stands about 40 minutes before his son, Bronny. I guess I didn't know that he was there that day. Ohio right. State's one of his top three choices. I'm on my phone and I see security come through. I think, okay, maybe it's like <laughs> the Ohio State president. I see a tall guy. And next thing I know, there's only like five people. This is 40 minutes before kickoff. Shocking. A lot of people weren't in. It was a nighttime game. Everyone was drinking still. So they come in pretty late. Yeah. And next thing I know, oh my gosh. Two people, LeBron. I didn't know that it was his son. I thought it was his manager next to him at the time. And after that, everyone's like, you know that that guy next to him was Bronny. So I tried to get a photo. I remember getting pushed out of the way, but it was insane. Oh, yeah. I think I might have yelled, come on to Jacob Beers. I don't think anybody heard that, but uh, <laughs> maybe one day. So that's yeah. – he's a tall guy. Like, man could be a wide receiver yeah. tight end. Like, oh, my gosh. Oh. But yeah, that was it was yeah, insane seeing him for five seconds like that. And then he was gone. But it was just like he can't, I wouldn't have thought he'd come through yeah. the normal folks area to get down low. I mean, it was a shock, but it was I'll never forget how big this guy was. So just a little side note there. What would you say if you have a favorite pregame routine? And this is kind of the last question. What is your pregame routine? <laughs> so uh before every game, I always before like this season before every game i would always watch a rocky movie you know really get me in the mood get me in the right mental space you know it was either it was rocky one through four and sometimes i watch creed every now and then i always watch i always watch one of them before every game this season and you know just i was just the best thing to get me in the right headspace interesting and i just want to kind of close with what advice would you have if you were five years younger what would you maybe change differently 
if you had anything or would you say it all worked out pretty well in the end? I guess I'm kind of asking, you know, what would you say to an incoming guy has some height, has some skill, you know, playing a couple of sports, what advice would you have for a kid like that? Uh, well, you know, a kid like that, I mean, I, I would just have to tell him definitely use all the resources that you got available to you, you know, and, you know, take every opportunity no matter what it is and just like just focus and just stay right mentally. That's really the biggest thing. Interesting. Well, I appreciate you so much coming on the sh- on the show, Zane. Best yep. of luck at Ball State. I don't know if you guys played Purdue down the road, but if so, I, I definitely want to be at that game and see you out there on the floor. So best of yep. luck to you. Thank you. Thank you for having me.